Well, yeah, but for some people, some people don't hold that. But to me, I see it as value structures. In other words, your own baby is more important than their neighbor's baby. Your neighbor's baby is more important than babies in Africa. Yes, it's like a chain reaction. But that's again why, because even though when we are talking about feminism and any kind of ideology, there is, as you said, the whole world is not black and white. The mind is not black and white. And as I said, that the mind is biased. And there is a, a psychological test which we can take to uh, a person can say that I am not racist. He can't even act. He or she can't even act that I'm not racist. But um, if the person, whether that person is white or black or brown, doesn't matter. There is a test that actually shows that even those people they are subconsciously biased to be racist. So there are parts of the mind within themselves that are already racist, although they are not consciously aware of it. Yeah. And that's where the problem begins. When we are fostering uh, a, a thing called feminism, an ism, based on the, it is based on fundamental principle of gender equality, but the term itself based on the well-being of the female gender, feminism. So there is also, the longer we fight for that, that again, the mind is going to get more and more biased towards the well-being of women. I'm not saying all of them. As I said, as you, uh, as, as you define some of that classified two groups, there are also two groups, we can say that two groups of feminism. Uh, so, yeah, well, I, I'm just saying I know this. I know there's two groups, of, two major groups. And there's all kinds of variations. I'm an anarcho feminist. That's not exactly the same as a modern feminist, but it, but it, but it could be close. It just depends on what issues. My, my basic yeah, thing is that everyone owns themselves. Everybody, male, female, child, everyone owns themselves. And so. Actually, uh, and own himself or herself well, because the brain doesn't develop all the capacities until. Well, they don't. They don't have so. full. Well, no, but they still have ownership. They don't have full ownership. In other words, like you. Right, so, well, because I believe that it's it starts at nothing or close to nothing, and then it basically, as the child develops, the mind develops cognitively, the responsibility and rights to that that individual increase. Because you're not saying the child doesn't own yourself. You're saying the child cannot be caring for themselves until they have developed. Well, but a parent still, in a sense, is not. Um, not caring what they're eating, they still often a parent will 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 moderate the food depending on the baby's preference. They'll put him to sleep or wake him up. Generally, I mean, to to some is about what the child needs are. So it's it so it's still you're you're not appealing to the parent's desires. You're appealing generally. You're appealing to the child's own wants or needs. In a sense, so every child could be a little bit different, and that, I'm just saying that difference that you're acknowledging is their ownership of themselves. Here again, we also have to, uh, uh, as for feminism, we have to acknowledge our own biases. Everything I state about gender equality, um, everybody else would be would see me as a feminist. I simply just don't like the term. As I said, I have issues with words. I don't like labels, no matter what. Just, to, just but, but, but you do like religion label, which I said doesn't have that much meaning, or has a, 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 too much proper of a in misinterpretation of something magical. And you use the word God, which also is a a word that has uh, magical meaning. So I, I, all I was trying to say is about your biases. You do seem to have a oh, you're okay with words being used improperly as long as they're ones that you connect to. You don't connect to feminism, but you haven't given me a justification that's valid, reliable, and provable that, 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 that it somehow is different. When we are identifying as of ourselves as feminists, there are again biases within us, uh, biased elements. So there are two groups of feminists, as I see. One is uh, uh, just fostering a kind of man-hating. Another is really fighting for gender equality and all kinds of equality. So a real feminist has to be aware that that person is not stepping into that kind of, that cocoon of man-hating. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm not 
Exactly. I don't hate <laughs> That's why I don't like the term feminism, but I'm not against feminism. I support them, the worst of them. I'm just saying that she needs to be aware that you have, by since you are calling, especially women, calling themselves feminists, and it is the, the mind has the urge to defend those beliefs, and subconsciously we will not even be aware of it. So those biases would get even stronger unless we acknowledge them and Stay aware of them. Otherwise, in time, it slowly will turn into man hate. Right. Well, there's a thing called intersectional feminists, which I think, to me, should be pretty much all feminists. That's that's one I would support. It's that intersectional meaning that you understand that the women's issue is not a separate issue just to women. That 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 when you address feminism intersectionally, you see how it affects men. Like let's say in America, I can't speak for everywhere, but in America, because I'm I'm male looking and because I'm male acting, because I'm big, I'm six foot, I weigh over three hundred pounds, you know, and I've been aggressive, you know, very manly in that sense. But I like to paint my nails, you know. I I I, I have my red beard. I and so in a sense, I don't follow all the things you're supposed to follow to be, you know, considered a manly man. But very few people would think that I'm somehow you know, not uh, male-like. But so, to me, what happens is society puts these obligations on me. In other words, like obligations yeah. that I shouldn't paint my nails. Why is that a problem? I mean, who who decided that only females can yeah. do this, right? Exactly. I mean, what is, there, is it written in stone somewhere? I mean, the whole point is I'm trying to... That's exactly how it's written. Because it's written. Our holy book that so, so it has to be true. Yeah, right. it, it, it's given to us by God that women have to obey their uh, fathers and their right. husbands, and it goes on forever because our book says so. So it's a fight against uh, for between one book and another book. Oh, de oh, definitely, it's fighting a, a book against a book. The, the, but all the books in general, in other words, like every major. Think of it this way: it is, a, 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 as far as I know, this is um, basically a fact. Is that Everything that's a monotheism is a male religion. In other words, that I know of, there's not major monotheistic religions that are female only. All of them, um, looks like I might have lost you. Nope, oh, lost you for a second. Yep. You came back. So all of them, in a sense, right, are um, versions of this male, or I call it manotheism instead of monotheism. Because because it's so um, pervasive sexism in all monotheistic faiths, or in general, I would say, because it could be something I don't know about. But as far as I know, there's no female uh, ones. Now, there, it's very interesting, though, because the Sumerian, one of their, their myths of creation was a female-only deity. So something has happened from the four, five thousand, six thousand, whatever years ago until now. Well, the first I know um, women's rights document in the world is from Turkey um, having a um, southern Turkey having basically a treaty with uh, Mesopotamia. So when they did that, they they as a like, you know don't do this, don't do this, don't steal our cows, you know, don't hurt women in a sense. So it, it was or treat women, you know, somewhat equally. So, to me, though, the fact that it's written there shows that there had to have been conflict. And, it, and then it, because it was written in that way, it makes me think that possibly before that, which I know if you go far enough back to 9,000, it's equalitarian, or basically equalitarian. And uh, so then at a certain point, by 5,000, right, 5,100, um, the pharaohs come into me, and then they, they say that everyone that has a um, kingship, in a sense, from that point, has to be male, passed down lineage. So I do agree, it's that, that it's right at that time, you can see, it starts to change. And then I think that, uh, basically, um, I think some of it is, the reason why sexism becomes so bad is because we worship the warrior. One reason we worship the warrior is because, like I said, religion gets a military. Religion gets a military, already has this kind of male belief sort of uh, germinating. Then it, it sees that the only way to, to push these beliefs is through military power, through conquest. And then who can do the conquest, like you were saying before? Warriors, so men. So almost said the greatest thing is men, because men are the ones that are able to actually succeed in, you know, basically pushing these ideas. So the ideas that get pushed become then the most male leaning, 
because they got there because of aggression, not because they, they, you know, enlightened the world with, you know, creative ideas. That, that's why, that's why all the, as you said, monotheism, uh, most of the gods, especially the, if we see uh, Judaism and Islam and Christianity, all kinds like a tree are the same, the yes. branches are the same tree. And uh, there, are, there is Hinduism, and most of them have male gods. Why? Because man, men were the controlling authority of the society. So of course their god were going to be uh, men and male. But again, uh, I should mention that uh, in some